Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik. Imagine heading out on a beautiful mountain trail surrounded by lush forest and breathtaking views. You have a completely clear schedule to run as long as you like, and the thought of embarking on a little running adventure thrills and excites you. If this sounds amazing, you're probably a trail runner. If this sounds daunting to downright terrifying, you're probably a road runner. But even the most diehard roadrunner has got to admit, there's something pretty magical, or at least a little romantic, about the idea of trail running. And if you'd like to try it or get better at it, there are a few things you're going to want to know first. Let's find out what. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. Today, I've invited back Coach Tara Pruitt. Tara is a trail running and strength coach here in Asheville, North Carolina, and she also coaches with me at the Asheville Running Retreat in September. We're talking about the basics of trail running and how it's different from the roads hill techniques to be a better climber and downhiller and we'll get into the types of specific trail training from beginner to more advanced spring is a great time to hit the trails and after listening to this you'll be even more prepared to tackle them if you're new to the show and curious about all the ways I can help your running, nutrition, and mindset, the best place to find me is on Instagram at The Planted Runner or head to theplantedrunner.com slash link for a quick list of all the ways I help runners like you. You can check out my book, The PR Team, get a custom running plan made just for you, and so much more. That's theplantedrunner.com slash link. If you're not new to the show, this is a great time to remind you about our monthly Apple Podcast Review Contest. All you have to do is write a five-star review, and one lucky winner will receive free and pretty much instant access to one of my online running masterclasses. Reviews are truly the easiest and most impactful way of helping this show, and I choose a new winner every month. Don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end of the episode for another Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. And now here's my conversation with Coach Tara. Welcome back to The Planted Runner, Tara. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. I figure it's spring and people are itching to get outside as the weather is getting a little nicer and lots of new people are going to be hitting the trails. So I thought it's time, a good time for a refresher for those uh, who do run trails and for the people who don't run trails but would like to. So let's get into the basics. Um, what makes trail running different than road running? Ooh, it really depends on where you're going. And here in our area in Western North Carolina, it's, it's really technical. Lots of roots and rocks and <laughs> slippery creeks. Um, and our terrain tends to be, have lots of elevation gain or descent. Um, also, we, in this area, we tend to have a lot of tree covered 
um, trails. So you travel out west or Midwest, and you tend to have these open spaces where the you can see for miles when you're on the trails. So around here, we it's a it's a lot more covered up. So we just have to be a little more prepared <laughs> for with you know maps and knowing where we're going and and uh, following uh, trailhead signs and directional signs on the trails or wondering or also like being clear that you're not in a wilderness area because those won't be marked as well they they are not mm-hmm. allowed to be marked so there's a lot going on when it comes to trail running yeah and and with those trees the spring actually is kind of nice because the leaves are down so we get better views hopefully but the leaves are also usually trampled on <laughs> this time of year. And so you're not trying to run through eight inches of fallen leaves, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of yeah. our area, well, our, we're in, in a rainforest. So a lot of our areas, everything's slick. If it doesn't get sunlight, usually, if, you know, if it's down in valleys, we're not, it's um, going to remain slick all the time. And it tends to be a, a fact, you know, one of the factors we kind of don't take into account, like road running, we think of, Oh, it rained a bunch. We just need to watch out to where the the places that flood or get lots of puddles. But out in the out in the woods, it's um it's a it's a whole nother factor of slippery, wet rocks, big bigger creeks, possible washouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're scaring people away for sure. <laughs> what what do you love about trail running? What what makes it so special? Uh, the adventure of just exploring somewhere that your own two feet that's the only place you, you, your own two feet have to take you there. You can't, a lot of places you, you have to go and explore and get a little uncomfortable and, um, be a, you know, have the adventurous spirit in, in, especially around here, you can't drive to a lot of the places that you're going to catch that amazing view or be able Mm to, um, a lot of backcountry campsites to head to head to or loops to take if you're going to take a um, a solo loop or if you want to take an out and back um so i think it's just that that just being able to like bring out the adventurous side and obviously planning from a safety standpoint but just getting out and and finding that like what's around this corner or what's at the top of this hill or um, just being able to uh, find the different foliage along the way. And um, it's just, just, there's something just that nature just fulfills your soul when you're out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty For special. Saving, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know, we don't have to have such a big adventure every time we go to the woods. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the adventure part is the thrill, but also a little bit of the fear, you know, for the fear of the unknown if you haven't done it. So what are some tips for just getting started? Um, if you're like, oh, I'd love to go run in the woods, but it's kind of weird to go do this by myself. I'm not sure where to start. I think that's a very natural feeling. And a lot of people feel that tends to hold them back. And my suggestion would be to pick a place that you can do an out and back and start to build your confidence over time. We're not going to get better at it by not going out there. And we're not going to get or tap into our adventurous side and explore more if we don't do a little bit at a time. So if that means planning ahead and, and being able to pick a spot that you might feel more comfortable with, or you might read on different, um, uh, apps that ha- will say that they have cell service. So you can reach out to someone if you, you know, fall into a position that you might want to make sure that you can call <laughs> your loved one or, and let them know that you're okay. But also if you have, you run into a situation that you're not sure of, then you can make double sure that you have cell service. But I, I ultimately think that in, it's just like at everything in life, you have to be able to take that first step and get out there and go a little further each time or explore a different trail each time, you know, the out and backs are the easiest way. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and less intimidating from a, a time standpoint or distance standpoint, because you're going to see familiar, a familiar area and you'll be able to kind of keep an eye on what time of day it might be in case you worry about weather or, um, being able to find your way back before dark. Um, so yeah, out and backs are the easiest they're just, yeah. there. and just keep, t- keep testing the distance or the time or the boundaries of what your comfort levels would be. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you the way that I did it was I wanted to, you know, get into trail running a little bit and, you know, I'm a road runner, you know that. And, but I really wanted to, you know, maybe go once a week to the trails and, but I was just like, I don't want to get lost. I don't necessarily want to go by myself and get lost and, and everything. So luckily the local running shop in town had a weekly trail running group. So, you know, we met in a parking lot at a trailhead and and I ran with a bunch of strangers who eventually became my friends. And, you know, that for me was like a way to feel safe, to feel part of a group and to not get lost and then eventually find community, which I think is super, super important. So, you know, I don't know if everybody has that in their town, but definitely hit up the, the local running shops. For sure. Yeah. And it, and they'll, they'll be able to tell you if there's ones like in, in our area, we have a lot of running groups to pick from, from morning times to, um, joining Facebook groups that have maybe the moms that drop their kids off at school and they have a mid morning run group and then the evening times. And then every, uh, almost every community has a weekend meetup as well. So you'll, I agree. That's a great way to kind of test the, test the waters a little bit more and have maybe a, um, an explorer buddy, an adventure buddy to be able to, to get out and learn your, learn the way, learn your way around. The other thing too, is just to look up some, there's different apps that you can play with that will help that, that do work and pull up, even if you don't have service so that you could, they, they could track uh, your route as well while you're on it. Mm. It, you just have to be careful because those apps tend to drain your cell phone battery very quickly. But there's another mm -hmm. avenue to kind of get out and just test the waters a little bit more each time and be able to t try a new new area. And um, and then I, I have found that a lot of clients will talk about meeting the mom groups are big and being able to reach out because they the moms want that community when they have that free time. And that's mm -hmm. that's been that's a big group in our area. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, let's get into some uh, technique. So, you know, most trails in most places are going to have some hills. Otherwise, they would just put a road there, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so what should we remember about running up and down hills when we're on the trails? What should we be thinking about? What should, is there any kind of form technique? Like, how, how would you advise somebody uh, when they're coming up to their very first hill? So when it comes to hill work running on the trails, I tell people to hike, just hike really fast on it and to in until you get comfortable running that, um, specific elevation gain, you know, it could be a grade, a percentage grade. Um, but hiking is the most friendly way and to get, especially if you're brand new to trail running is to be okay with be okay with walking and hiking. And I call it riking. It's like a mix of running and a mix of hiking. And then, um, when you, when you're ready to pick up the pace and one of the things to keep in mind is you're going to hit rocks and roots and you might need to pick up your knees a little bit more. And you're almost always looking slightly down so that you don't trip. <laughs> but yeah, that I think that it's, um, it's just about like l getting used to being, picking your feet up a little bit differently and, um, picking your knees up a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That, I can definitely relate to that. I was, uh, you know, when I was first getting into it, I was on what I thought was a pretty long trail run with some much more experienced people. And at the end of it, the group leader was like, I can tell you're a road runner. And I was like, what, how? And he's like, cause you don't pick up your feet. And I was just like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Picking up your feet is good advice. It's not. Yeah. It's not something you think about, but um, yeah. it certainly helps. And you know, if walking or hiking is faster than running, definitely save energy and do it. I think people yeah. sometimes have a little ego when it comes to the hills. Would you say? I would definitely say that. But I think with trail running in general, if you're transitioning from road running to trail running, it is going to slow you down a little bit. And could, you could pick back up pace as you get more confident on the trail. Uh, I just think that you just want you, it's good to know that up front. It was kind of a shock to me. And I got a little frustrated when I was making the transition from road running 
to trail running because I was like, why is this taking so long? And it's, yes. I'm, my pace is slower and I can't keep the same, you know, mile per minute. And it would also depend on what route we took or how much climbing there was. And so knowing, going into it, knowing if somebody had said, Hey, you're going to slow, you're going to have to slow down a little bit until you gain some confidence on the trail. That would have been a really big piece for me to be like, all right, this isn't, I'm not that terrible of a runner. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's going to just take some time. That's, that's a really interesting point of it too. Cause you know, when you go out for a road run, unless you're doing some kind of workout where you're going up and down in pace, you're pretty much, you know, steady as you go, just keeping, keeping it cool. But on the trails, your heart rate's going up and down and you're stopping and you're walking and you're going down, you know, like it's a lot more variable, which for some people, uh, it's, it's not as comfortable, you know, right. to, to keep doing that up and down. Yeah. And I think it would de- depend on what your goal is. And if you're, if you're transitioning from road running to trail running, or you even intermix it a little bit, just having that frame of mind that I may not be able to be as consistent with my pace at first, but that could get there. And I, I will tell athletes to mix trail and gravel until they're confident on the trail. So you don't have to run trail around here. You don't, it just depends on what you have access to, but you don't have to run the trail the entire time as you're making that progression into trail running. You could mix some gravel in there so that you can still feel confident about your speed and pace and feel on target with that. And then go play a little bit on the trail, either mix it in or put it at the beginning or the end of your run, wherever you feel comfortable or wherever you have access to. That's a great, that's a great idea. So, so we talked about the ups. What about the downs, the downhill running for most people uh, at first, at least can be terrifying, you know, absolutely terrifying. And uh, there's a lot of times when you're actually going slower on the downhill than you are on the uphill. So what do we got to know about that? So a couple of things will come to, to pl- in play. If it's a technical trail, like say the Appalachian trail, you're going to have sex sections of that, that you're just hiking down or stepping down and that it's going to slow you down. But if you have a section that you can run down, it's still similar to road running downhill form with that slightly forward lean, not a hinge, but a slightly forward lean and keeping your feet um, a little more under you in a, it versus letting them get in front of you where your heel striking and basically stopping yourself, you know, creating more impact. It's still similar. It just might have to change up a little bit as the, depending on the type of technicality of the trail. Um, there are sections of trails that you're just hiking down it because it's safer, more sustainable. And like you said, same thing as uphill, same thing with downhill is it's going to conserve some energy versus and save your muscles and joints and the longevity of your run if you continue to enjoy the trail running aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, because the the inclination is to lean back into the hill, you know, to, to prevent ourselves from falling forward. So it's mm-hmm. kind of a real mind shift to teach yourself you actually have to lean forward. Like how do you have any tips for that, (laughs) that mind shift or just practice? I think it's practice for sure. And, and if you know that the, 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 the hard part about that is it's just our natural instinct. And so we're fighting against something that feels natural and it does, it just, it's going to take practice. It could depend on the type of trail that you're on. It could depend on how long you've been running and what that feels like naturally for you. So there's, there's, it just is going to have to be repetition and and you'll get better at it. Some people end up realizing they're better downhill runners than they thought. And Mm -hmm. I used to run with a friend that she would crush it on the downhill. And I'd be like, I, I just, there's that little tiny bit of fear that just hangs on in the back of my head that, you know, that little child, that inner child fear that keeps me like this little slow down, be more careful, um, take my time. It's okay. Um, mm-hmm. so I think, yeah, it's just going to take some time and then you might realize you're a better downhill runner than you thought. After a short break, we'll be back with more trail running tips. Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey, and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. 
I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman. You know what's the best way to spend an afternoon after your long run? At the movies. Your hardworking legs get much-needed rest, and of course, there's plenty of snacks. If you love going to the movies, you're going to want to hear this. Regal Unlimited is the all-you-can-watch movie subscription pass that pays for itself in just two visits. You can see any standard 2D movie anytime with no blackout dates or restrictions. When you want to watch a movie in a premium format like 4DX, IMAX, RPX, or Screen X, your Regal Unlimited membership plan gets you into those premium experiences at a reduced cost. And with Regal Unlimited, you won't just save money on tickets. You'll also save 10% on all non-alcoholic concessions items. Yep, you not only save on movies, but snacks too. So if you're planning to see two movies this month, you need to join Regal Unlimited. Sign up now in the Regal app or at regmovies.com slash unlimited and use my code PLANTEDR24. That's planted, the letter R, 24 at regmovies.com slash unlimited. Welcome back to The Planted Runner and my conversation with Coach Tara Pruitt. One thing that some people I know think about, especially if, you know, you're in road running for performance, you're concerned about your speed, you love doing everything fast. They're concerned that trail running, you know, do too much of it and it's going to slow you down. Any thoughts on that? I see that that would be a concern. And I have a a few athletes that, that kind of mix the two and depending on the athlete, some of the things that I would suggest is to really hone in on your speed work where you're comfortable doing that throughout your week and then play on the trails, um, on the weekends and sprinkle the trail, unless you're making a complete transition to trail running and you want to compete in that aspect. Um, then you, you're going to need to do speed work, you know, at, somewhere on a trail to get yourself used to that. But it, mm-hmm. it doesn't always have to be extremely technical and not all trails are that some are very well groomed like a railway or a, um, a, you know, trails like out in Colorado are very well groomed and they're easy to do things like that type of workout on, but it, it's just going to take a little bit of mix, you know, mixing it in gradually. And I do believe that you can be just as fast on the trails as the road. It's just going to take practice for the transition of it and what your mm-hmm. body will allow. And, some of it can depend on your experience as a runner versus um, making that complete transition 100%. It just needs to be a little at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it also depends on where you are in your training cycle, what your goals mm-hmm. are. Like if you are trying to run, you know, a fast marathon next month, you shouldn't be spending a lot of time on trails. You know, you, you should be getting specific for that road race. But when your next marathon is five months away, yeah, go out there, have fun, do stuff, yeah. do live life, right? You Agree. know? Agree. Agree. Yeah. Or I will tell an athlete to put, if they are stacking runs, you know, back to back to back, one of their runs will be what I call a fun run or a go out and enjoy yourself. And this is just the time that you're going to do that in. And, and it's still, 
um, keeping them in um, a, either a zone or an RPE so that they can enjoy doing something that they love in their program. But yes, well ahead of um, a goal race for sure, if, mm-hmm. especially if that's not the type of race they're going to be doing. Right, exactly. So a lot of these uh, trail runs, especially once you get into it, or if you are training for a trail race, a lot of these runs take all day or half a day. (laughs) You know, they take many, many hours. So I would love to know, what should we pack? Oh, yes. Um, So it depends on the race. Some races, you want to look at how far apart their aid stations are and what their what their aid stations might provide, um, but also know what you should be training with the fuel that you're going to use for your your goal race. And you want to make sure that you carry the things that you know the aid station may not provide. You know, if they provide something like Tailwind, then you, and you don't use that, you're going to need to, to be make sure you're carrying the fuel that you're used to using. And of course, practice with what you're going to use race day. Don't do anything new on race day. Um, right. But I encourage athletes that to carry water, of course, electrolytes, um, extra electrolytes, um, depending on the race and how, um, the, the weather conditions, or if you have found during training, then you're going to want things like, uh, butt wipes (laughs) and, um, (laughs) chafing, you know, anything that any kind of lube that you would normally use. Um, and then um, some people like chews or um, some type of a you know goo, whatever that might be. And some runners rely completely on that. But because, like you said, the amount of time that you'll be out on the trails, hopefully during training, you've navigated what type of fuel works best for you. Does real food work better for you? You know, do you, can you rely just on a liquid type of fueling? Is that what works best for you? Um, and then making sure, you know, I carry my, um, cell phone, a hanky, um, chapstick, um, a small first aid kit. If I'm going to be out in wilderness areas that way, um, it, my little first aid kit will have like an ankle brace in it just in case. Mm. (laughs) Um, so you, it's just, it really can relate specifically to the race that you're doing and how far apart the aid stations are and generally what type of fueling those aid stations will have. I personally don't care for a lot of aid station food. I like to have my own fueling and things that I know that my stomach will tolerate and has tolerated throughout training. Yeah, I mean, the stuff from what I hear at uh, at Trail Race Aid Station just kind of runs the gambit. I mean, there's so much real food, you know, birthday cake, uh, you know, (laughs) fruit, sandwiches, barbecue. I mean, it's like, it's like a party at some yes. times. <laughs> Quesadillas. Pumpkin Quesadillas. pie. I cannot pie. imagine running full of quesadillas, but <laughs> <laughs> well, they're pieces. They're a piece yeah. like, and grilled cheese. Like that was uh, one day uh, during one race, a grilled cheese saved my life. I was like, Whoa, I didn't know I needed <laughs> this right now. This saved my world and a piece of pumpkin pie too. I, on my first 50 K, I was like, who knew pumpkin pie would be the best thing in the world at 24 miles? Like it's a, yeah. I, I felt like a new person. <laughs> yeah. And Camille Heron, the, the ultra runner, she drinks Guinness, you know? Oh my <laughs> so gosh. Maybe, I didn't know maybe, that. Yes. I mean, not, not like every Regular. stop, but yeah. yeah, she'll always have a beer. <laughs> yeah. I have a, but, I carry a, um, a bottle of fireball, a small bottle of fireball when I'm doing a race. And if Just I, if I, I <laughs> summit, a summit, a mountaintop or a race at a race location. And I'm like, okay, I made it. And now we're going home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny, funny. All right, so let's switch gears just a little bit to trail shoes. Do we need specific trail shoes or we can we just, you know, run with the shoes we've got? I think trail shoes are beneficial. You don't have to make that investment initially unless you just find that you're going to fall in love with it and do it regularly, but I do think trail shoes are made a little bit differently from the forefoot to the um, type of sole that it has as far as, um, I call them lugs. I, but the bottom of the shoe is going to have a little bit more grip to them and bigger lugs and be able to kind of grab the trail and be able to keep you hopefully from slipping. Um, some shoes are made more durable or thicker than others. And you just have to Mm -hmm. give them a little bit of a try. Plus road shoes are going to have a little bit 
they're going to have a small lug, but it's more of a smoother surface. It's going to have a different type of forefoot in it. It's going to give you a different shove forward. And so I, I think trail shoes are extremely beneficial. Mm -hmm. Some of them come waterproof as well. So if you know, that's something that you end up in areas that get a lot of rain or like us, we're a rainforest area. A lot of our trails seem to stay damp or wet. Um, or if you're end up doing a trail race that sadly would, I hope this never happens to anybody, but it does, um, where you get rained on the whole time. So a, a mm -hmm. waterproof fair, pair of shoes to keep your feet dry is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what about some trail workouts? You know, I mean, when I really think about trail running, I think of just going out for a run and just, you know, doing whatever happens and it's all like free flowing and wonderful and all of that. <laughs> but, you know, if you're really training for a mm -hmm. trail race or if this is your main form of exercise, you don't always want to be in the same zone the whole time. You want to do some workouts. Do you have any examples or any tips for some trail workouts? Yeah. So I think, yes, you're right. Most of you are 80% of your week, 70 to 80% of your week is going to be in a zone two because you're ultimately training to be out there. Like you said, for a very long period of time, hours, depending on the athlete, it could be, you know, anywhere from four and a half to five hours to eight or nine or 12 hours, um, depending on your goal. So work from a, from a standpoint of the other types of workouts, it, it's still going to be similar to road running, but a, a, it could be a slight bit different. So you're still getting stride work in there. You're still getting speed work in your, in there. And I encourage athletes to switch that to possibly a gravel terrain. So use your warm up on the trail if that's what you'd like. But if you can do some of your speed work on more of a gravel terrain, so you're still training your body to uh, be used to that un slightly unstable foot strike that's still going to be beneficial to your training. Um, but yeah, we're st you're still going to get the speed work, still going to get the strides. You're still going to get uh, progression work. It's just going to look a little bit different from a, where you decide to take that. And again, it could slow down just a little compared to road running, but it will get back there as your body adjusts to being on the trails consistently. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, your numbers on your watch aren't going to look the same, but you definitely can get all the same effort levels yes. that you can at, on any other surface, for sure. And I find that athletes that combine the two, they start to see their road running change in a good way. They're mm. And yeah. so I think that it's not, it's not a bad thing to mix them. But again, like you said earlier, making sure that you're doing that well ahead in the beginning of your training block so that you're not doing, you're not adding something new, like we would normally discourage any other type of new activity too close to a race. We want to stick to the, you know, you put in this work, you want to stick to your goals and finish out that training block close to the race. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, you're uh, really involved in the trail community, of course, and you've got something special coming up. Why don't you tell us what is happening in a couple weeks? Yeah. So I am the host of the Trail Running Film Festival here in Asheville, but this is a global uh, film festival. And it, last year we were in over 60 cities around the globe. And this year we hope to surpass that. But um, the interesting thing was this tour used to travel in, on its own, but it was the, the Trail Running Film Fest company would travel before COVID and um, hit each city. And then when COVID hit and they decided to uh, bring it back two years ago, so in 2020, um, three, they were like, Hey, we want to bring this back, but we want to try a new approach. So they re they reached out to everyone on their email list and said, we want this to end up in, in your city. Would you consider being a host? So I was like, huh, we'll apply and see if, if they consider me to be a host. We have an amazing trail running community here in Asheville. Mm -hmm. So I applied and I was like, surely they want a running store or, you know, right. a, a group, I don't have a run group at the moment, but in the past I had run groups, like surely they want someone that's got a community already going. And, uh, they gave it to me. So I was like, 
you do realize I've never done this before. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, I think you're a perfect fit and you, and it's yours. So last year I wow. brought the trail running film festival to Asheville and it was a hit. Um, we hosted it at our music venue, which is downtown called the orange peel, but it is in other cities. So if you can't make it to Asheville and visit us here, that you can look up trailfilmfest.com and see if it's in a city near you. So we just had our first films um, featured starting last weekend. So we, they will go through, um, last year we had them go through the fall. So um, we there could be a, a trail film fest visiting your local town. And if not, they're still taking hosts. So you can reach out to them and see if that's something that you want to bring to your city or town or running store. Um, the cool part is it was up to each host how that was going to fit into their community. And some communities are having it in a barn and having a group run before and then celebrating the film fest in a barn. Um, so I decided that it was to showcase our town. We would have it at the Orange Peel, which is our most popular music venue here. And we will have three group runs throughout the weekend. We'll have two on Saturday morning, one on Sunday morning. We'll also have a free feature film of a documentary called Upward. And it is a film feature of 500,000 feet of vert in 31 days on one trail. And it's a local trail mm. here. I know that's very, I could barely say the words without thinking, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we have a great weekend planned with the film film festival itself ending on Sunday evening. Um, so we're going to. And what are have the dates of those? April twentieth and twenty first. All right, very yeah. very cool. We'd love to have you visit Asheville. Yeah, for sure. We'll have all of the info in the show notes. So, so if anybody wants to uh, sign up, bring it to their city, or come to ours, that would be great. All right. Well, Tara, this has been great to have you back on the show. Uh, you and I uh, hosted the Asheville Running Retreat together last fall. We're doing that again this year. So if anybody wants to run with us, head to theplantedrunner.com slash retreat, and that will be in the show notes too. Always great to see you, Tara. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute, fortifying your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is turn the butterflies into wings. It's completely normal to be really nervous before a hard workout or a race. You're about to do something really hard and it's not obvious that it's going to go well. Your stomach is churning and your heart is racing. This is very uncomfortable, but it's all a part of the flight or fight response. Your body is prepping for flight by turning up the adrenaline and speeding up your heart rate. Take a deep breath and remember the nerves you're feeling are there to help you perform better. So don't forget to turn those butterflies you're feeling into wings. Thank you for listening to The Planted Runner, part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Don't forget that you can win free access to one of my sprint session masterclasses just for writing an Apple podcast review. So be sure to write yours right after your run today. Reviews are the number one way to boost this show's reach, and it's a great way to tell me what you'd like to hear next because I read every single one. Have a great run today. Sports stars. They're like superheroes. But they're actually real. Which is why we've made a podcast about them. You see... They've all got a story. But too many of these stories were cut short. Kobe Bryant. Payne Stewart. Flo jo, Phil Hughes. Justin Fashionew. We're writing episodes about all of them. And sadly, many more. Death of a Sports Star. A new series from Crowd Network. <laughs> 